If you want to create a drum kit in Ableton using your own selection of samples so that you can save that and use it in any other Ableton project, then stick around because I'm going to show you how to do that. And I also have a really cool bonus tip at the end regarding effects for you, which I'm really excited to share. So let's dive in. So here we are in Ableton. Now the goal is to create a drum kit with your own sounds that you can save and then use in different projects. So to start with, the samples that I'm using, I've got in my documents folder in a folder here called samples. This is the sounds I'm going to be using. This could be from Loop Masters, Splice, wherever. I uh, just wanted to show you a quick hack in terms of how to work with these really nice and easily in live. So uh, come to the folder where this works on PC or Mac. You can drag samples over into this left hand side and this creates a dynamic link between Ableton and this folder. So you can click here and you can browse everything that's in that folder and it all updates in real time if you add new samples, which is awesome. So let's come in and find the sounds that I want to be working with, which is drum hits. So I want to take some kicks, hi-hats, claps, etc., um, load them into a kit that I can make drum patterns with, save and then use at a later point. Um, what you might see here is that I've got a red dot here. Uh, I don't want to keep having to come through this file structure. So I right clicked and selected favorites just there. Uh, and that means that instead of going through all of these folders, I can just come to favorites and I've immediately got that folder just here to work with. You can do that with plugins, loads of stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is load up an empty drum rack and explain what a drum rack is just in case you're not familiar. So under instruments, you're gonna find drum rack. Let's drag that onto an empty MIDI track. Now what you see here is you've got 128 different slots uh, that you are able to put samples on. We're, this is where we're gonna be putting our drum hits. Now the difference between this and just a standard simpler, which you might have used, simpler or sampler, if we drag this on, you can load one audio file into here and then play it with your keyboard or put MIDI notes in to play it. A drum rack is essentially 128 simplers on one track. That means that you can put all of your drum sounds into this rack and use them on the same track instead of having a different track for your kick, snare, etc. Uh, and we can also rename and save this once we're done. So let's go to our samples. And sometimes I like to have a reference track open in Spotify, a track that I think, yeah, I want to kind of emulate this drum sound. Um, but I'm just going to go sort of by my own gut feeling for this one, do whatever you like. Uh, the first thing I'm going to try and find is a kick drum. Nice, so let's go for that one. Let's simply drag it on top of C1 just there. And we can see that's loaded into a simpler. I'm simply gonna go through and pick a few more bits like a clap and a hi-hat, and then we'll look at how to make patterns with this and save it. Right, so now I've loaded in some different sounds. I've got some claps, hi-hats, and percussion, and the kick. Let's say I want to make a pattern using these drum sounds. All you need to do is create an empty MIDI clip by double-clicking in one of these empty slots. And you can see that on the left-hand side here, instead of having all of the potential MIDI notes, we've just got what we've got in the rack, which is really, really helpful. Um, if this little headphone is blue, which you can do by clicking it, then you can audition the sounds that you have to work with. So this is what I've picked. Um, a tip for you here, depending on how your samples have been named from the pack, you may want to rename them in here Otherwise, they might make absolutely no sense when you get into here. So you can rename by going rename kick, clap, etc. Mine are OK because they're pretty well named. But you can see here those two that I renamed are now much easier to see what's going on on those two tracks. So let's make a quick beat. Um, highlight the section that you want to duplicate. And then I do Command D to duplicate. Let's go for a clap. Short hi-hat. Let's have a listen to that. Let's make it a little bit longer. I'm going to do duplicate loop just over here. See what that sounds like at the end. The 
percussion hit. Where do we want that? Duplicate that out. Great, so now you know how to make a pattern with your own drum sounds. Let's have a look at how to save this. So let's right click on this and rename um, Sick House Drums Mate. Nice. So what we then want to do is hit this save icon and that's gonna save everything in here, including the samples and where we've saved them. Sick House Drums Mate, nice. So where you're gonna be able to find this uh, is in a few different places, okay? So you can either come into the user library, which is where you as a user can save your own library of presets, or you could come into instruments and drum rack. If you drop this down, you're gonna see everything that you've saved there. So in a new project, even if I've deleted this, opened up a different project, I can load up Sick House Drums Mate, and we've got all of that ready to go, which is awesome. Okay, so now let's look at how we can take a loop and take the individual elements from it to make our own drum patterns. I'm just gonna start with an empty drum rack here and I'm gonna come into samples. I'm gonna take a full drum loop. Uh, let's find one. Cool, let's see what I can extract from this drum loop. So I'm gonna drag it onto this cell and what I'm going to use is this one shot mode and I'm going to use the start and end markers to just take out the bits that I want. And you can click and drag left and right and you can click and drag up and down to zoom. So this is the kick drum. You can also use the fade in and out, the transpose, etc., and the filter, which comes in really handy. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, let's add a little bit of a fade out there. Let's see how this sounds for a kick drum. Pretty good. So we could try and use the filter to cut out that kind of whoosh as far as we can. Up to you, Which, whichever you think sounds best you go for kick sounds pretty nice. Um, so I'm going to leave it without the filter. I'm not really too bothered about the filter there. Um, awesome. What I'm going to do now is rename this so that I know it's the kick drum. So let's go rename kick. Cool. Now I'm going to hold down alt or option and drag this. And you can see the little plus there, which says that I'm copying it to this new cell. Now let's go on the hunt for another element. This looks like it's probably going to be a hi-hat. So we might not want as much of a fade out. Awesome. That was pretty easy. And you can get really precise with these zooming in so that you don't have like a lag at the start. There we are. see what else we can find. Hold down Option or Alt again, drag this out. Let's see. So the filter comes in really handy when you're doing the claps. So let's drag this down, get this really close to the start. Now in house beats like this, the kick and clap almost always play at the same time. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult to separate that. Let's have a listen to this. Okay, let's rename this clap or snare, whatever it is. We're going to use the filter and we're going to change it to a high pass filter, which allows the high frequencies to pass and cuts out the lows. And basically we're going to use this to cut out the kick drum. So let's see how that sounds. Wow, that worked pretty much out of the gate, didn't it? Turn the filter off. Filter on. Wow, that worked a lot better than I thought it was going to first time. Uh, another thing I like to do here is change the filter type and you get a drive knob, which lets you add some like gritty gain, which sounds really cool. Let's 
Nice. Let's see what else we can grab. Uh, let's just do one more, then I'll make a quick pattern with it to show you the, uh, the kind of result that we get. Uh, there was some sort of percussion down the end, wasn't there? Let's have a little gander at what we can find. Maybe that little dink, whatever it is. Cool, it's a little little percussion hit. We can turn the volume up here. Nice. So let's make a very quick pattern with this. I didn't rename the percussion hit. Percussion. Whoops. and use the velocity to make this a little bit more human. Vary in some of these. You can hold down command or control and then use the, do the velocities like this, which is helpful for overlapping things like the kick and clap here. Let's make the first kick a bit harder. Great, and then you could save that in exactly the same way that we saved the last one. So the final tip I want to give you here is a little tip to do with effects. So if you wanted to add reverb to just the clap, for example, uh, you can't use the sends to do that. That's not going to allow you to do what you want to do. That's going to put a uh, delay on everything. So let's have a listen to that. which isn't really what we want. If we wanted to just put it on the clap, we'd be struggling a little bit. So here's the way that you get around this. We're going to come into the drum rack and press this icon, and we're going to press R. So essentially what we're going to be able to do is have one of these send and returns per track, so per element of the drum rack. Um, what we're going to do to do this is we've pressed this R, which is returns, and it's saying drop audio effects here. That's exactly what we're going to do. Let's drag in the reverb. Nice. So what we can now do is at the top of this drum rack, we've got this icon which expands um, each of the individual elements. So you can do pan, mute, solo, volumes, etc. And what you see is that we've got these sends now. Now these are different uh, to these sends. So what we're able to do is add reverb to just the clap, for example. All hi-hat. And you can drag whatever things you want into here. You could drag in a delay and then put some on the clap. So that's a really nice way of making sends available for individual elements in the rack. All of these settings also get saved when you save the rack. And if you've saved the rack and then you make some edits to it, just save it again. It'll ask you if you want to overwrite it. And yes, you do want to overwrite it so you can save the new changes. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you're interested in diving into making dance music in Ableton in a little bit more depth, then check out the details of my Ableton Accelerator full course below this video. You'll also find on this end card somewhere an Ableton tutorials playlist that I have here on the channel. Uh, and if you've got any feedback on the way that I dealt with the ads during the video, not having a pre-roll ad, just having a mid-roll ad, I'd love to hear your feedback on that because I want to make it as seamless as possible for you guys. So thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.